Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Well, hello and welcome to uh, the February edition of And Now for Something Completely Machinima. I'm joined today by my co-hosts. Uh, Ricky Grove. Hey. And Damien Valentine. Hello. Uh, Phil is off swimming in the ice ocean. fishing. It's ice fishing, yes. Yeah, he indeed. took over my spot. <laughs> he did indeed. Um, but he will be back for our next episode. Um, this month, this week, we are going to be talking about um, Ricky's pick, uh, film pick. Um, Ricky, why don't you tell us about it? Sure. It's called, uh, it's an excerpt from a longer machinima called uh, Escape Game. It's a uh, created by Chris Huberman and Unam Music HK and the Salim Banks uh, song Dance Again. Now, I have some bad news. Uh, when I picked the, uh, the v video from uh, Vimeo, um, I enjoyed it, liked it, and I'll tell you the reasons why in a minute. But it was taken down, and it's no longer available, probably because of music copyright issues. I found uh, it on is... YouTube. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I found the link. So you're, you're oh, good. good. It's on YouTube. I looked around. I couldn't find it. Uh, it was definitely down from Vimeo. Good. That's great. That way people will see it. Yep. Well, it's a music video. And Machinima has a long and interesting history uh, connected to uh, music videos. The first music video I saw in um, for Machinima was back in the early days when Paul Marino did a uh, uh, video called Still Seeing Breen. Breen was a character from Half-Life 2, and he animated the character to sing this really driving rock song. And I remember being so impressed and thinking, now this, this is an excellent vehicle for machinima because you don't have to uh, do a lot of realism. You can do jump cuts. It can be very exciting. And people have done many musicals since then. In fact, I even saw an opera once. It wasn't very successful, but um, so music and machinima go real well together. And this video, the reason why I chose this video is because how well the music and the uh, machinima animation and world uh, uh, fit together. It was shot in GTA 5, and I was also intrigued with that because it's a celebratory, happy, warm mood in, in the video, whereas GTA 5 tends to be more darker crime focused machinima. So I was really interested to see how they were going to take these crime-based characters and put them in a in a warm, happy musical. And essentially it's a beach party with GTA 5 characters on the beach. And the camera sort of roams through the various uh, setups of different people dancing and talking and eating one guy playing the guitar like crazy and the it's in french with subtitles and it has this sort of light hip-hop feel to the music very very celebratory and that tone really caught my eye uh, I, I really found myself engaged and smiling while i was watching it I have to admit, personally, I'm not usually attracted to happy videos <laughs> or happy movies. I don't know why. I just mm. <laughs> it's a personal it's a personal preference. <laughs> I would much rather watch horror and drama. But this one really caught my eye and it made me think this might be a stretch, but it made me think of in my theater days, which were very long. I spent a lot of time reading about theater history, and one of the interesting 
aspects of theater history was Roman comedy. Roman comedy always, according to historians, always ended with a celebration at the end with the cast, with a party-like atmosphere, singing songs. And it made me think of this. Now, here we've come all the way from Roman comedy to the present day, where we have game characters celebrating in a dance-like song in a very happy way. Now, it's not to say that it's all light, because there's some social commentary in the story, which is pretty pointed, but that's in the lyrics. If you're a person that doesn't pay a lot of attention to the lyrics and just the visuals, you're not going to get a lot of that. And that was the other thing I admired about is the multi-layered quality of it. Um, Chris Uberman has is a French filmmaker and animator. He's got an absolutely knock-dead, drop-down website that features several other long videos uh, that I liked a lot. He works essentially in um, GTA V. Uh, he's been making videos since the 90s. He wanted to make films interestingly because he studied a lot of psychoanalysis and philosophy. Typical French focus. <laughs> yeah. You won't you won't find that in a Yugoslavian filmmaker or a Russian one. Although sometimes maybe you would. His past and current works include stuff like picture collaborations with artists around the world doing glitch photography. One of my favorites of his short film, animated films, was a film called uh, uh, Stop, not animated, but it was a collage film called Stop Smoking, in which he took cigarette scenes from various films and mashed them all together in a sort of interesting commentary on, on film and smoking. He's a smart filmmaker, and I think that's also what attracted to him what attracted me to him and his films. I urge you to check out his other films, but first, make sure you watch this short uh, uh, musical film because I think you'll be delighted at uh, YouTube, and we'll provide the link on the uh, show notes for the episode. So now that's my piece. What are you? What's your take? You, you want me to go next, Damien? Sure. <laughs> well, I love this, actually, and, I'm, and like you, I really picked up on the vibe, but I wanted to... Uh, d d go into it a little bit deeper, actually, and sure. and of course, you know, as you've you've said, it's part of another, it's part of a bigger film, and the, the bigger film is called Escape Game, and as you said, created by uh, Chris Uberman, who's um, I I understood him to be an artist using GTA Five in this particular piece as a poetic space for interpreting, or um, I think in his language, transforming violence. Mm. Uh, drawing on the philosophy of Empedocles. Uh, and Empe I don't know if you know this, but Empedocles was a pre-Socratic philosopher ah. her, her, who's attributed with having established the four ultimate elements that make up our world, so fire, air, water, and earth, um, awesome. which, is, which has been interpreted as an assertion that nothing new comes from being. Uh, and that there is only change between elements. And these changes take place as a consequence of divine powers of of love and strife, where love draws things together, as evidenced in this video, and strife pushes them apart. And I think that's what uh, this guy is teasing with in this particular um, film. Um, so with that context, and then looking at the complete film, the story here, as I understand it, is is of this kind of central character that you see walking across the beach in this short piece. His name's Louis, and he's confronted with a series of unleashed elements in this game, GTA V, um, that, as, as I understand it, he has to change in order to return to his real life. Uh, and the, the, the character and story is narrated by this guy, Lionel Mazzari, um, who's, who's the guy... Um, whose velvety voice is the one you you hear halfway through this little short. Mm. Now, having faced this series of challenges, this particular chapter, which which kicks in at about minute forty two in this film, in this bigger film, is the is basically the final part of this story, and it places the character, like you said, on a beach, walking past a crowd of people, presumably at some kind of um, car or gang related meetup. 
and he's passing them by and he goes over to this collapsed or I suppose inebriated person of whom he asked to borrow his guitar and then he plays the guitar and it's this guitar playing that results in this transformation of this social gathering into a happy party where, um, you know, Louis is playing this beautiful piece of music by HK and the Sultan Banks and and in turn, I think that's what enables him to explore the true nature of the relationship between the virtual and the, the physical self. That's my interpretation of, of what this, this, is, this is about. Now, throughout the film, um, as I understand it, Louis has sought to transcend the game world. And he's basically, um, he's got to pass through it to get into the real world. And in fact, in the end, what what emerges from this final piece is that he states that um, the fragility of the human faculty of admitting the reality of accepting without reservation the imperiousness of life exists in the ability to see the illusion and that having seen the illusion, you can never return to reality because it is already present. That's what he's saying in there. And in fact, that's um, that narrated part was taken or inspired by the philosopher Clement uh, Rosset, French, of course. Um, and his work is well known um, for touching on uh, reality and its double. And in fact, Rosset was also a great lover of film because uh, he said it demonstrated this ability to interweave reality with ambiguity. And what I think you're seeing in this film is this really fun twist on this 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 kind of whole idea in a in a basically in a side piece to the main party, where you've got these kind of two virtual characters on a stage looking at a series of TV screens. This is in this little short that you that you shared with us. Um, and on these screens are real people dancing and singing and pointing at the virtual characters, and they're asking, the virtual characters are asking in return, should we change the channel? What are they doing? Or should we just carry on dancing ourselves um, because we're all part of the same illusion? And I think that's what what's going on. They're playing on who's who's in the virtual world, who's in the real world, and they're pointing at one another doing that. Uh, and then what the narrator then says is this world has no meaning by itself and is only a misleading double of an episode. Uh, perhaps this impression of having been doubled constitutes not only the structure of metaphysics, but is also the best example of a philosophical illusion. So I think in the end, what he's doing is leaving it uh, to us as basically as voyeurs of this journey to decide um, whether we are in the, in the physical or the virtual and to, to interpret how these worlds are related and what is illusory and, and what is real. And I think also perhaps at a deeper level, what he's doing here with with the whole piece is questioning to to what extent um, the violence that we see in GTA is actually an alter ego of who we are, uh, and so overall, I think the film and the game will become a little bit analogous of of what I would call um, you know the the picture of Dorian Gray, the Oscar Wilde thing, mm. where, where you know the the horror of what goes on in one world is played out in this picture, and I think he's. He's doing a similar sort of thing. He's playing with these two, two versions of reality, I suppose. Fascinating. Now, uh, the other thing that I picked up on is, I mean, obviously, this is incredibly well edited. I really enjoyed the way that he'd edited it. I thought it was very well edited. Um, yeah, like yeah. Some, for example, you know, the, the foot falls across the beach, beautifully done. But also the way in which he switches between the realities um, through those screens. So there's a bit there where you've got the real real life being projected to us through virtual TV screens and, and vice versa. Very well done. Um, the music is also a really great choice because HK and the Sultan Bunks, they're, they're, a, they're a, a French popular band with this kind of bluesy come reggae sort of style. But their songs are known for being commentaries on themes of things like social exclusion, inequity and overconsumption in society, which I think is a fascinating right. narrative that actually takes place throughout GTA as well. So all round, I think what you've got here is a very symbolic set of choices being made in this work. Now, I'm no, you know, I'm no um, expert on French philosophy at all, but I have to say I did really enjoy reading up on this a little bit more deeply because it is, I think there's a lot of philosophical thinking that's gone into the 
um, the creation of this piece. It's probably worth watching the whole lot if you can, you know, bear to sit through nearly an hour of of, right, of work that right. doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Of which this kind of transcendence piece is is the end part of it. I think we've rarely seen this sort of work actually in machinima, although. One creator did come to mind. You'll 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 know who I'm talking about. Tutsi um, Navaratna's machinima is mm. the closest that I could think of um, that had a similar kind of approach in terms of the subject right. and also right. the treatment. I mean, if if you remember, you remember his film. I think it was called um, Journey into the Metaverse. Yes, uh, and it was released about 2011, and that was also playing with this idea of where where am I? Where is my double? Where where I'm looking for the for my other other part of my being kind of thing. So he was moving between these kind of you know virtual and and physical worlds, if you like. So I'll share a link to that one as well because I think it might sure. be quite interesting to compare yeah. contrast the styles. Contrast Tootsie's, the styles. Tootsie's work was much more uh, literal in terms of the, those themes and those ideas. You could see them played out right in front of you. Whereas this film, I find it absolutely fascinating. You can watch it simply as an entertainment yes. and enjoy the music and the movement of the characters and everything with no hint of any philosophy or any background about narrative choices or reality or meta-reality or virtual or the real or any of that. Yeah. Or you could look at it that way or do both. <laughs> and well, that's what I love about a work of art like this is that it gives you so many different ways to approach enjoying the uh, the creation. It, it it does. I really enjoyed watching it. So another great pick, Ricky. I, I was blown away by this one. I really enjoyed it. Well, I'm so glad. Yeah, you really got into it. I, I realized that there was stuff going on, but I didn't want to dip down too far into it because for some reason sometimes when i do that it 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 destroys the the initial pleasure of watching it now sometimes that will make it a deeper experience more the more you understand it for example the more i reread the lord of the rings the more i understand the kinds of things he was trying to do with history and myth and folklore and and ideas so in that case, it works just fine. But this one, I don't know. I I want to watch the whole film again, and I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Tracy. That's really fascinating commentary. Damien, what are your what's your take? Well, I'm glad I came last with this one because I didn't. I missed that this is actually just the end of a bit much larger film because um, I watched it and it works just as it is. That few minutes long segment with the song, um, and so I just watched that and I really enjoyed it. it was it's very bright and cheerful in a way that wasn't obnoxious. It was just um, very joyful, I guess would be the word uh, I would use for it, because it's just um, it's not what you expect from Grand Theft Auto. We've seen lots of crime um, car <laughs> chases and stuff like that. I think I said before, mm -hmm. I, I really like it when cinema makers will pick a game and then they'll make something that's not it doesn't match the tone of the game, or not necessarily something the game's designed for. And this is they'll play example, against but... the uh, the theme and the mood of the game. Yeah, exactly, and I always like that. And this is a really good example of that because it works so well, and they've made good use of the um, camera tools in GTA Five to do this story as well. Right. I think having that access to that made this film possible, and they've obviously spent a lot of time mastering those tools to put this together mm -hmm. and it's just a great film uh, I'm, I'm undecided at the moment if i want to watch the rest of it or if i just want to enjoy this moment because it works as a standalone piece without yeah. the rest of it yeah um, so i have to think about do i want to watch the rest of it as well to, to fully grasp it or do i just want this uh moment that i really enjoyed watching mm -hmm. well be sure to visit his website because he's got not only several other films, uh, which are longish and philosophical, but he also has great photography 
Uh, and he has a blog in which he's pulled in several other live action films that he admires and is interested in, mostly from French popular culture and French intellectuals. Uh, but it's it's a very exciting website. I, I urge you to check it out to see more interesting things there. Mm. Fascinating. I wonder what Phil would have made of this. Yeah. He loves I philosophy. He <laughs> I know. I Well, I think he would have enjoyed it and picked up on some of those things that you were talking about. <laughs> we, I think we leave it to you to do the deep diving on this, so I don't think he would have gone um, that deep into it, but I think he would have picked up on it. Mm. Although I think he's much more interested in trying to catch something through the ice than yeah. you know, yeah. gallivanting on the beach or anything wouldn't, like that. Wouldn't be salmon, though, would it? Would it? No, like a char. Oh. Get some char from a lake, you know, go out on the lake, make a little hut, put a little fire there, a little smoke, a little beef jerky, sit there, you know, maybe listen to some music. Cool. Watch out for yeah, polar bears and yetis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, watch out for yetis. those. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this episode. Um, we hope you enjoyed our discussion. Uh, tune in next week. Um, we have another exciting film to have a look at. Um, and in the meantime, that's it from us. You are listening to And Now for, for Something Completely Machinima. I'm Tracy. And uh, it's goodbye from me and from Ricky. And me. And so Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>